Hello Aviators, Sky here, and today we have a slightly unusual story. A story about a team of people who fly, restore, develop and produce airplanes. And all this happens not in Seattle, not in Toulouse and not in Irkutsk, but among the hills and woods to the south of the Russian capital. First thought, there are no aircraft plants there. Here we meet one of the stereotypes relating to the high-tech industry in general and aviation in particular. That it is a crazy complicated and expensive business, and to create an aircraft you need to be at least Joe Sutter, with a huge engineering team and a high-level corporate support. This is true if we are talking about a wide-body airliner, but if you are working in general aviation you can be more modest. Modern technologies greatly simplify the work, and now it is much easier to deal with aviation, especially if you are talented engineers fueled with knowledge and ambition. What kind of talented engineers are these? The core of the team are two guys, Arsen Gritskevich and Alexei Nikiforov, who founded Aegon Aircrafts, one of the few Russian private companies that develop and manufacture their own airplanes. Their story began in the late 1990s, within the walls of the Moscow Aviation Institute. Well, where else? Then a group of students was engaged in the design of hang gliders, and their business was advancing. Over several years they created many models, were successfully flying them and winning awards. Over time, the levels of competence and ambition grew. Gliders received engines, it became possible to make the light kit planes to assemble at home. Then the guys took up maintenance of larger machines, both with simple works and complex repair. And eventually it came to full restoration. In the end, at Aegon, a team of specialists gathered, capable of rising to the level that, to be honest, many are afraid of. Maintenance and kit assembly is one thing, but your own aircraft development is completely another. The creation of a new design company didn't take long. Now it is a kind of cozy office with a beautiful design, from the walls of which the veterans Tupolev, Boeing and Mikoyan are looking at the newcomers. Aviators will be aviators. They made some interior details themselves from aircraft grade aluminum with standard riveting. Ok, a giant logo is cool of course, but let's see what kind of planes they make. The advantage of communicating with small manufacturers, the person who creates these birds can tell us about the technology directly. Hello everyone, my name is Alexei Nikiforov, I'm the chief designer of Aegon Aircrafts and I'm working with all of our projects. I'll tell you a little about three of our aircraft, one of which is already flying and the others are now in the process of development and construction. Let's start with the first aircraft. This is an ultralight Fly X11 aircraft. Ultralight means its weight is 115 kilograms, or 250 pounds. In the Class G airspace, you can safely fly without a pilot license and registration. This aircraft is all metal. At first glance, this may seem irrational. Everyone is used to seeing tubular fabric structures, but our plane is made entirely of duralumin, and it meets the requirements of a 115 kilogram aircraft. As the power plant, we use the Italian Paulini 250 engine with 36 horsepower, which allows to fly at a cruise speed of 105 km per hour, or 56 knots. Also, the aircraft is designed in such a way that it can be easily disassembled and placed in a container for transportation and storage. The aircraft will be made in the form of a kit or completely ready. It is not necessary to have special skills for its assembly. All parts are extremely simple, which makes it easy for anyone to work with. The cost of such devices is expected to be in the range from $9,000 in the basic kit to $28,000 for a fully finished device in the get in and fly format. The device of course is for amateurs, ultra light, so is unable to travel very far. But on the other hand it allows you to fly, remaining very simple and moreover not requiring pilot license and certification. An excellent option for fans of flights without problems. The next plane is now in the development process. This is a serious machine, in a way, based on the Cessna 182 concept. It is a four-seat aircraft with a powerful engine. We plan to use the Lycoming 540 engine, which will allow the aircraft to fly at a speed of 250 km per hour, 135 knots. The fuselage scheme itself is a beam stringer design with two doors. The flight control is mainly cable. A feature of this aircraft is its wing, a rather complex design which should give good results both for takeoff and landing and cruising modes. An unconventional concept was used for this type of aircraft, a wing with powerful mechanization, double slotted retractable flaps and a slat which can be pulled out simultaneously with the flaps. Thus, we plan to increase the lifting force and reduce takeoff and landing speed. 
Also, I want to note that, in contrast with the Cessna 182 prototype, we decided to make it more comfortable and increased the cabin width to 125 centimeters or 50 inches. The plane should show pretty good performance for this class. It's probably too early to estimate the cost of this airplane, called the Admiral 777. The finished Sirius machine can cost about $190,000. At first glance, it is very expensive, but in fact only at first. For example, the Cessna 182 in its simplest versions can easily cost over $600,000. And given that the aircraft claims to have excellent flight performance and comfort for its class, the Admiral can be a very interesting aircraft with good prospects. A prototype should appear later this year. By the way, to check on its progress, subscribe to Aegon's social media. There the information comes out more regularly than here on the channel. Of course, there may be some skepticism. Ok, cool, they have computer models. We would like to see something, you know, real. Now I think it's time to move a little to the southeast, to their home airfield, Bolshoye Grizlova. It is a classic general aviation airfield, equipped with the usual set of tools, maintenance hangars and two runways, one grass and one concrete. Here the Aegon Aircraft Production Division is located, and here the computer models turn into the flying metal birds. Despite the development of production of their own models, the Aegon guys did not forget about the old business. There are planes undergoing maintenance, repair and restoration. Moreover, given the level of competences, the guys undertake very difficult and responsible work. It is one thing to work on some elements of the engine and check avionics, and quite another to remaster the airframe. Restoration in general is quite a special job, when you are given a pile of crumbled metal pieces and you have to turn it exactly into the pretty airplane it was 50 years ago when it left the factory. I note that the models described in the design bureau are not all that the company is working on. In the hangar we can meet another curious aircraft. Well, not a complete aircraft, the airframe is still being assembled, so don't be confused if it looks like a post-apocalyptic machine, which is very relevant today. At this stage of work all planes look like that, and soon we will see a classic Bush-type short takeoff and landing plane, but with the use of an all-metal airframe, improved ergonomics and mechanization. When they finish, it will be interesting to look at the Bush 505 SL Star Lifter. The model names at Aegon are a separate topic. But this is not why we came here. It's time to get acquainted with the hero of today's story. GN-155 is a light, two-seat, all-metal high-wing aircraft created by Aegon engineers. This is a brand new, fully operational flying aircraft, designed and assembled from scratch. Let's see what it is. During the development, the aviators were going for a combination of both the possibility of short takeoff and landing, as well as sufficiently high cruise speeds, schemes that often contradict each other. One of the main problems of expanding the range of flight speeds is the wing. For fast and slow aircraft it is different. To maintain high flight speed, the wing was made with a rather thin profile and better aerodynamics. There are no hefty fixed slats, the wing is clean, and all protruding parts, for example tank hatches, are hidden under fairings. Actually, the whole design has better streamlining, unlike many stalls, which often look like tractors with wings. Each wing console has one strut, which allows to reinforce the structure, but at the same time minimize air resistance. Many similar aircraft are equipped with several struts at once, which do not help during the cruise flight. However, it was necessary to maintain the minimum speed. To do this, the trailing edge received good mechanization. Ailerons and large slotted flaps integrated into the wing, not hovering and not going into the stream constantly. Plus the tail has received a stabilizer with a trimmer, a keel with a rudder and a little vertical stabilizer under the fuselage. The tricycle landing gear is lightweight and equipped with fairings for better aerodynamics, but powerful enough to work with unpaved runways. The dry weight of the aircraft is 430 kilograms, or 950 pounds, and the maximum takeoff weight reaches 700 kilometers, 1550 pounds. Not so little for machines of this class. All this beauty is being raced into the air by the Belgian four-cylinder opposite engine UL Power UL350i. Its thrust reaches 118 horsepower, which is quite enough for our aircraft, and the engine itself is quite light and compact, not to mention the excellent economy. Two 55 liter wing tanks give the aircraft 1100 kilometers or 600 miles range. By the way, it uses simple car gasoline. The aircraft is equipped with a three bladed Airmaster propeller with variable pitch. Classic. 
Thanks to the engine and all the solutions applied, the GN155 can safely keep a minimum speed of about 60 km per hour, 32 knots, a cruise speed of 185 km per hour, 100 knots, with a maximum speed of more than 220 km per hour, 119 knots. For a short takeoff and landing aircraft, excellent performance. I think we need to talk about one small myth surrounding the GN155. There is this plane. Zenit CH750, a very good and world-famous machine, which GN is very similar to. Actually, the aviators do not hide the fact that they took the Chris Hines brainchild as a source of inspiration, but the 155, having absorbed its ideology and a number of solutions, is nevertheless an independent aircraft that has many differences from the basis. A rounded fuselage, a significantly redesigned and elongated front part of the cockpit that added a lot of space, a completely different wing with a different profile and mechanization. Here Aegon focused on high cruising speeds, plus the tail unit is decently remade, with a symmetrical stabilizer, separation of the keel and rudder, and implementation of additional aerodynamic surfaces. I will add my personal opinion. Airplanes created by different companies for close but still different tasks are always different, and their similarity is only speculative. Well, you know, like the 2144 is a copy of the Concorde, the F-15 is a copy of the MiG-25, and the A320 is a copy of the Boeing 737. Sorry, but no, it doesn't work that way. Well, we can't evaluate an airplane only by its look. Let's see how it flies. The first check of aircraft safety is the moment when chief designer takes the pilot's seat. The cockpit here is very nice, with the use of albeit simple but good ergonomic solutions. Inside there is a rather large trunk. This is the bonus of 155. The emergency parachute system is located not in it, but in the back behind the wall, which significantly increases the available space. Ok, time to fly. The advanced automation and engines simplify the pilot's work, starting operations take only a couple of minutes. Permission to take off, short run, and now we are in the air, cutting the spring sky over the Moscow region. The glazing is pretty wide, the view is excellent. The cabin is designed for two people, both have control sticks and access to all systems. The equipment here is a special story, perhaps the most interesting. Aegon applies their own avionics on their aircraft. Aegon employee Alexei. I can tell you a little about avionics, which are installed on the GN155. We develop software ourselves, we develop the entire interface ourselves. Moreover, the interface can be customized for each user and customer. Still in the development stage are an autopilot integrated into avionics and a navigation system. Avionics of course are still pretty simple and will continue to develop, but the very fact that the company makes it at all is very impressive. Such piloting systems are complex and often crazy expensive. This is the advantage of Aegon, in terms of the ability to adapt the equipment to their aircraft and customers, coupled with the ability to do it all much cheaper. In flight, all information is available from the central display. The critical data is duplicated by analog devices. Comfort, safety and ergonomics. The aircraft is easy to fly, accelerates at an altitude and flies rather slowly when we want to soar above the runway at the minimum speed. It is greatly balanced and keeps a high level of quality. The plane is not yet in serious production, but there is no feeling that this is some kind of amateur craft. We return to the airfield. Approach, soft landing with the usual shaking on the concrete, braking and finally full stop at the hangar. GN-155 is not the only Aegon model, but today we were able to test it in flight. Hopefully we will soon see more of its brothers. By the way, unlike the Admiral, the Model 155 is already much closer to us by price, about $75,000. For this class it is very accessible, most of the analogs are much more expensive. On this I think we can end today's adventure. We leave Aegon for now, wish them good luck and look forward for future planes. And you, dear aviators, fly big planes, but do not forget about the small ones. There are many bonuses and emotions here. Fast flights and soft landings to you.